<laughs> well, I'm. Uh, are you have an additional one? Okay. So I can tell you a joke if you want. <laughs> What, what are you waiting for? Sorry? For Jessica said it's, it's the wrong one. What? Ah, okay. Wrong one. <laughs> uh, we can uh, go with this one. Can't you work with this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go with this one. And we'll yeah, yeah. The, anyway, about the comments, they were all included, so I believe we can uh, add to that. So, however, uh, I, I, I hope you're all familiar with the CHP network, CHP youth network. Um, uh, many of you, uh, many focal points are already collaborating with, uh, with young people. Uh, we, it was mentioned, I guess, yesterday uh, that there were around, around 11 countries, I believe, who are uh, having representatives for young people also here in these sessions. But uh, what we really um, are about to say right now in this presentation is that uh, we met yesterday in this, uh, this one uh, breakout group and we realized that we are somehow lost in space. Um, but it's not because that we don't know where to go or uh, from the other side, WHO uh, doesn't have a clear vision uh, what is our role. It's mostly because of uh, all these years, uh, new and new young people were coming and uh, there was kind of a lack of uh, history background from all of us, for example, also me, although we have a representative here in this network, uh, I basically uh, heard the history, uh, all history from the beginning to the end yesterday night. Um, so that's why we came up to a conclusion that what we are really um, eager to do is uh, make the whole thing, the cooperation uh, with young people uh, within uh, WHO uh, work. So we really believe that uh, we need to have a clear vision uh, with the cooperation between uh, all relevant partners in this process. With this I refer to not just WHO and, uh, and the CHP Youth Network, the Environmental and Health Youth Network, but also uh, we need to know what's the, what's the framework of collaboration on the national level, uh, so with the focal points. Now, um, we were asked to give some concrete suggestions, and I would mention here, uh, again, as I come from Slovenia, a great, um, great example that was, uh, was done here in Slovenia in the, in the last two months. We, we had a great collaboration with the Ministry of Health, with the Institute of Public Health, um, and since in Slovenia we are uh, similar to, to other European countries living, on a, uh, living in a condition that not so many youth organizations are active on both fields, so health and, uh, um, yeah, so on health and environment, and even not so many NGOs, which are not youth NGOs, are working on the, on the field. Uh, <coughs> which is connected to both of this, we decided that we cannot really write um, really great chapters about what the young people think about this. Uh, therefore, what we did was uh, let's make a, a, a process, let's agree on some steps for the next uh, two years, so short, short term, for midterm until the next ministerial conference until 2020. So what we would like this network and collaboration between these stakeholders to be looking like. Um, so this is also one of the suggestions, uh, which I, I hope I can show it on the next slide. Um, it's definitely that we need to um, set up some, some ground rules. Uh, we need to see what are the expectations from one side, and we need to see uh, what's also our mission. Right now, I guess 22 young people yesterday uh, had 22 different uh, interpretations of the mission of CHP. And many times, strategic planning is really important. So to understand uh, why are we here and what do we want to achieve. And on the other hand, also, what do the stakeholders want? So. Uh, as you see, everything is going ready now. Great. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally, yeah. So. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, here we go. Uh, what I'd like to point out is that uh, we totally understood that uh, in many countries um, there is no uh, clear connection between the national focal points and the youth commitment in this, on this field. So um, not just about being uh, sitting at the, at the, the sessions with, uh, with uh, very important people from, uh, from these countries, but mostly to understand what are we doing uh, on the national level. And this is what is also connected to the next uh, point, the fifth one, but I'm coming there. Um, so especially it's really important to come to the 
to come to the point where we uh, assure that in each country there is distinctly <coughs> free of people. I don't want to go into details why is youth participation impo uh, important, why non formal education, uh, with, for example, peer education can make a change. Now, the second, second thing is really important that we need to understand the finish, uh, the, define the, the responsibility of, uh, of young, young people. Um, for example, this thing, as I said before, raising awareness about the concrete topics. Now, also an important topic is that to provide the capacity building uh, uh, activities um, on, uh, on certain levels, especially for empower these youth organizations, these young people, because we don't have uh, a history, a career of, I don't know, WHO officials or uh, as people at the government. <coughs> Therefore, we are using also this opportunity to grow up, to, to, to build up our self-esteem, to become uh, more, more uh, let's say, active, on the, like, active citizens. Um, now, a really important thing is, and that's why I brought this, uh, this document along, we are very interested in this kind of reports. I see the whole three Tape. papers there full of uh, WHO reports, and uh, it's also my personal, uh, my personal uh, uh, hobby to read the scientific reports. <laughs> I'm, I'm like that. I'm, I'm not joking, I'm really doing it. But, sorry, uh, when young people age 15, 16, or age 20, uh, they read uh, the, the title Nanotechnology and Human Health, Scientific Evidence and Risk Governance, um, and they see they need to read 120 pages of, of a document, they usually say, okay, I'm rather going out and get drunk because it's uh, too much for me. Um, and uh, it's not that I'm promoting that. I'm uh, actually one of these who, who would say that uh, we should need uh, give other possibilities to young people. But we need to make it in a youth-friendly way, the presentation so the young people understand what actually yesterday and here it was taught, what was said. For example, yesterday's presentation about asbestos made for me uh, quite a lot of uh, clear vision on this topic, you know. But for many young people, which from my organization wouldn't even understand what is the position about, okay. So, but it doesn't mean that the young people are not interested. This means that you need to make it uh, interest, interesting. You need, to, uh, you need to make it relevant for them. And at the same time, they see that it's okay for them to get active on this topic. So this is where the CHP Youth Network can play a big role to translate uh, those uh, 120 uh, pages uh, scientific evidence uh, pages um, and, uh, and make it uh, relevant to young people. At the same time, to invite um, uh, experts from this field to present those things in a youth-friendly way. To us. So uh, this is a really important role we receive. And also, the fifth point, I said I'm coming back to that, it's a consultation and coordination among youth organizations at the national level. This is actually connected with the first one. So, as I said at the beginning, 22 people, at the end of the day, can say what they think, okay? But I cannot talk on behalf of 73 million people in Europe. We are, uh, we are just representing some of us, the organized youth. What about the youth that is not organized? What about the young people who stay, actually not even going to youth clubs or youth organizations? They just decide to be on the streets playing football, for example. It's, it's, a, it's an option how to consult with these young people. And, um, what is really important here is that when WHO will refer to us on a specific topic, for example, on climate change, at the end of the day, we don't refer just to one person in our group and say, okay, you are an expert on climate change, you, you talk on our behalf. No, because it's not right now how the things work. And this is, on the longer term, what we really want to make a step forward, and uh, we are really keen on to make it, making uh, this thing work, with especially, especially your suggestions. And the last, the last part, uh, and here I'm going to quite fast finish, <laughs> is that uh, what is the, actually the whole scope of, uh, of, the, of the CHP network. So one very important thing also for you, it's about networking. So uh, it's, not just about, uh, it's not just about to come here and uh, be really proactive on the round table and, uh, on a gala dinner and uh, being happy that uh, some of the waiters come uh, more often to our to our uh, table Deep. and give us a little bit more amount of uh, wine beverages <laughs> uh, but it's also about getting to know each other not young people just but also the uh, officials and the people and the governments where we believe uh, for future we one day will have a little bit more experience on that and be active there now the second thing is really important is capacity building so uh, it's not just about getting to know how um, how the whole uh, thing around 
climate change works, or I said before asbestos or whatever, <laughs> but it's also about getting skills, you know, it's about uh, knowing how to advocate, make training courses for trainers who can be multiplicators then on the local level and making some changes. <coughs> um, it's also about the, the coordination, so this one suggestion was definitely the database, a few projects, although we have thousands of databases in Europe, um, we believe this database can make a big uh, <laughs> step forward. Yes. Um, and showing the good, good practices uh, that were done in some countries and then at the end of the day can be uh, implemented in some other country. One, for example, was mentioned before, Slovenia has a great example how they collaborate with it. And this is where I think the guys from the ministry are openly launching the call that everybody who wants some, uh, who wants some guidance or some hints how to do those things, they're open to this. And uh, what I wanted to, to finish with, I'm really thankful to the WHO that made it step forward and, uh, and uh, recognized young people as a really important stakeholder. Um, and we don't want to disappoint you. You know, you are really, really, really important to us. And uh, we launch a really open call here that uh, maybe we are young and maybe sometimes we are too um, talkative or maybe too uh, impulsive on some of the suggestions, but uh, we are uh, really looking forward to learn uh, things and uh, and work with you in the future and make ourselves come on the same bank of the river and uh, deliver at the end with uh, with something which was also expected from us. So uh, practically this is from my side and uh, if there are some colleagues from mine who would like to add some of the things, uh, please take it forward.